about God's gift of grace through grieving, through writing, and music, which is my personal experience. And I'm starting with a flashback of May of 2019. The girly girls, including myself, were, and including Lindsay, uh, no, not that time, that was the other album. Anyway, my dad was there, I was there, and we were recording an album called Revelation Avenue. We were on day two, we were laying down the rest of the musical tracks, guitar, piano, drums, that kind of thing. And uh, next up were gonna be vocals, and my dad had to leave to go to a neurology appointment. When he came back, we had some bad news. And this was on live mic. The sound engineer heard it. We all heard it. It was probably recorded. He dropped the F-bomb. Now, this guy was almost a priest, so this was a big deal. And that's when we found out that he had bladder cancer. And then I had to sing about him. So if you've listened to our album, Revelation Avenue, the song I had to record vocally after that news was called Deep Blue Sea. And it's about the two men I love most in my life, my husband, Ron, and my dad. So there's a lot of authentic emotion in that song if you get a chance to hear it. So I had written that song actually many years before when he had gotten his first cancer diagnosis. And I was torn between living in Prescott and my parents at that time who were in St. Louis. So all the emotion was there. And I was also experiencing a lifelong dream come true of making this album with my dad. So that was a threat of being yanked away. So as many of you know, my dad felt, fought a prolonged and very brave battle with bladder cancer, along with lymphoma, leukemia, you know, what the heck, let's throw in prostate cancer too. Um, so that's what we were dealing with. And last winter, 2023, there was a small window of relief. There was a calm, like the, the eye of a hurricane. I was preparing to attend a songwriting workshop at the home, yes, that's right, the home of Karen and Linford, my favorite band from Over the Rhine. And I'll set the scene here. There were 16 of us, all people like me, all hungry for songwriting, all in love with the music of Over the Rhine, and also scared proofless to be adjudicated by our peers and our idols. So at that time, I had just written a song for my dad called Chasing the Dragon. Now, that's kind of obvious that the dragon was cancer and we were trying to chase it away. And it had lines like this, take my hand, no looking back, we'll get there yet. See how far we've come? We're gonna take a stand, it cannot hurt us now. So before a jury of my peers, I played that song and my musical idols had this to say. They said, oh, you're the big chorus girl. You're the one that can get a whole stadium singing along with you. I thought, huh, okay, cool. But then, unexpected, God's grace. I became very close to two participants there, Kimberly and Olga Maria. When I helped Olga Maria, who was very scared herself, get through her song before she performed it. She was gonna just not do it, and I played along with her until she felt good enough to get there on stage, and she did a beautiful job. And it turns out, Kimberly had just lost her father that week. The funeral was two days before the songwriting workshop. I'd like to believe that I was a shoulder for her to cry on. But what I didn't know, and I learned, Olga Maria is a minister. Kimberly is the music minister at her church. So the other thing I didn't tell you yet is I have been very, very lost spiritually. There's a quote in the Over the Rhine song on one of their albums that I really relate to. I wonder if you've ever felt this way. I'm not letting go of God. I'm just losing my grip. So I was used to feeling so close to God so sure of his presence, but I couldn't, I call out and I couldn't hear anything return. I couldn't feel it in my heart and I really didn't know why. 
Anyway, after the workshop, Kimberly and Uncle Marie and I, we stayed in close contact. We Zoomed every week. We still text almost every day. We did prayer services together on Zoom. That was something new for me. I felt a little bit like an imposter, feeling nothing of God's presence in my heart, and also admitting it to these new friends, but praying with them anyway. Well, last year, as many of you know, turned into a very difficult year. My dad suffered greatly. The treatments that were effective against the cancer made him feel like he was dying anyway. I knew the end, but now the timeline was becoming more clear. I read a lot, especially Pima Chodron, thanks to Lynn's. And as Pima describes in her book, The Places That Scare You, there are many ways of dealing with grief in difficult times. Some are humorous, some are benign, and some are dangerous. She lists these things, and I felt called out. Is shopping your way of coping? Hmm, busted. Sundance Catalog's not mad about that, but check in with Ron and see what he thinks. Turning to alcohol or food? Well, food, definitely. Do I cheer myself up with drugs or sex? Not this time, not this, not this time. Do I seek adventure? Well, when my brother died, I definitely sought adventure and I became a travel nurse after that. I think that traveling to the middle of nowhere, Ohio, to play my original songs from a musical Heroes is adventurous, so sure. Surfing the net, for sure. On November 10th last year, that was the day my dad signed on to hospice. I called him to work. I spent the entire day online. It takes a long time to research the perfect keyboard to buy. And then, blessedly, the most constructive way that I know to deal with grief, diving headfirst into writing. We all know songs about grief. For example, The Beatles, Yesterday, Romantic Grief. Tears in Heaven by Eric Clapton when he lost his young son. Even American Pie, that's a different kind of grief, the day the music died. So I continued writing mine, and I'm gonna play for you with Kelly's beautiful backup vocals, one I wrote just a few weeks ago. Um, by the way, this one is sad, but then we'll bring it up later. This one is called Keeper of the Light. Mm -hmm. 